Hello, my YouTube family. What is up? How are you guys doing? So we have yet to do a garden tour this year, 2021, and I thought today was a great day to do it now that the garden is bountiful and thriving and all the plants are getting nice and big. As you can tell, the lighting is a little bit darker and that's on purpose. <laughs> I waited until the sun went down to come out and share the garden with you guys because here in Virginia, um, it is about, I think it was like 94 degrees today, but the humidity is just absolutely ridiculous. So it is almost impossible to even be out here in the middle of the day. You step outside and you just start dripping sweat instantly. So Joe and I come out and water the garden and prune and weed and do all those things after the sun goes down. So tonight I'm going to share with you guys how the hoop house is doing. I give you guys an update with that. I had a lot of people that requested an update with the hoop house and how that's going and also what we've got going on here in the raised bed garden um, so you guys can just kind of see how everything's going. So let's take a look. So as you guys can tell, the plants are humongous. They are doing really good. The hoop house so far is holding up really well. Um, we have had a lot of comments about the heat and how this plastic would get so hot that it would melt and stick to the metal. But I have to tell you guys that that is not an issue at all and it's extremely hot here in the summertime. So I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's a combination of the shade cloth and also the fact that we have fans running all day long to circulate the air. But if you come out here and touch this plastic in the middle of the day, it's actually cool to the touch. So we've had no issues with the plastic melting to the cattle panels. All right, you guys ready? Dun da da da. Look at that. It is just doing so well. I told Joe if there was one thing I could do differently, it would be to make it bigger. <laughs> I would have made the hoop house longer to give us even more growing space because we have honestly, you guys, never had plants that have grown as well as these plants have grown in the hoop house. Yeah. So we've got broccoli. Um, Joe's actually gonna harvest some of these for us tonight because they're getting really big. Did you get the basket, babe? No. Okay. But we've got broccoli. We've already harvested several of them and ate them. And as you can see, the cauliflowers are all thriving. I'm gonna grab the basket, right? Okay. Joe's gonna go grab the basket. But basically, I think if you look at it from here, We've got probably 15 broccoli plants on the left and the right. And then this whole line to the back is cauliflower. And over here we've got cabbage. And then down the center we've got our tomatoes. We've got regular tomatoes and then we've got cherry tomatoes in here. Um, I've had a lot of comments from people about the overhead sprinkler system, a lot of people were saying you can't let water touch the leaves of your tomatoes. Um, I will tell you guys that Joe and I have been greenhouse gardening for quite a while now and our tomatoes do really well. We've never had an issue with blight or anything like that. And I think part of it is that even though these plants are getting watered overhead, once they're done getting watered, I come and shake this cattle panel and it shakes off all the excess uh, water from the leaves. And then we have the fans on, so it really helps to circulate the air. So it's not like the plants are sitting in this wet environment all the time. And as you guys can tell, I heavily prune my tomatoes. I always have. They um, really look more like tomato trees. And if you've grown tomatoes before, you know that they get super bushy to the point where they're almost unmanageable. So we don't grow our tomatoes like that. We prune them heavily so that there's good circulation and airflow. Um, and then at the top is where we get all of our growth and our tomatoes. Oh, 
are you getting that one? This one? Yeah, that one oh, definitely. Yeah. One. yeah. scissors but that's all right i'm sure we'll uh, get some comments on <laughs> hammers and <laughs> yeah the right scissors. comments on the on the right hammer to use joe and the right scissors if you guys don't get the joke go back and look at the hoop house build video <laughs> So we've got a lot of these that are ready to be harvested. So Joe's gonna work on that while I finish giving you a little tour of the hoop house. So we've got some really large Brussels sprout plants here that we planted last fall. So, so the story behind these Brussels sprout plants is that they were actually planted in the greenhouse last fall, but they were planted in some really crappy dirt. So they got nice and big, but the actual Brussels never formed properly you can see them again this new stock here starting to form little brussels in the corners but what happens is they just grow into leaves and they never form a brussel so joe's like let's leave them let's see what happens with them so for now they're just living in the hoop house we do have a little baby brussel there i planted some brussels in the outside garden and they were getting devoured by some kind of insect and i could not figure out what was eating them we tried several different um home remedy home remedy sprays to try and kill it and it didn't matter what i did it was just killing the plants so i transplanted it here into the hoop house and as you can see it is doing much better so here's our cabbages i think we have um i don't know 15 to 20 cabbages we've got green and purple you guys i love the cabbages look how beautiful they are and they're solid and big already they're about as big as my palm but they're nice and hard and they're forming so beautifully look at that so pretty And here's some more broccolis. Some little guys starting there. All right, so here is the outside garden. And we recently, if you guys watch my Instagram stories, we just um, weed barriered and mulched the entire garden. All of the walkways are mulched, which has been just amazing as far as not having to mow and weed whack. And then we just put some pavers down to walk on. So this was, was I should say, our onion bed and over here in this corner, we have garlic that has not sprouted up yet, so that's why it's blank right there. But I think what happened to our onions is we had about, what'd you say, about a week and a half, Joe, of just torrential downpours here in Virginia. And I think that the onions got too much water. So all of these onions, um, the onions and our potatoes, our potatoes were doing so good. And then after that week and a half of all that rain they just took a dump so we've got some here that are still making it we'll salvage what we can but that's the way it goes in the garden right and this is just a empty garden bed we haven't really done much with it but we did try our hand at planting some celery so we actually have a few that made it and we've got some more in the greenhouse as well so we will tend to these little guys and see how they do my plan with them, because we don't eat a ton of celery, is to use them in some stock. I've got to do some bone stock soon, or even uh, can up some beef stew.
this is my herb bed. So I've got my basil and lots of dill. I use tons of dill for my pickles in the summer, so I like having my own dill plants. And I just love the smell of the dill. It's such a pretty plant. We've got oregano and a little bit of thyme. And I've got some new rosemary plants. I just planted these this spring. So they're doing really well. I have two big pots of rosemary on the deck right outside the back door. I use a lot of rosemary and a lot of oregano, so I wanted to plant some new ones to get them going. And then you guys could probably guess what these are. <laughs> these are zucchinis. So we've got this little trellis that we built up here with cattle panel. Um, the zucchinis and the cucumbers grow up through those. And these are just thriving, but they always do, right? Any kind of squash or zucchini or cucumbers always do really well. We've got these trellises that we put up for the cucumbers and everything. Kind of a tunnel going all the way through to the back. Got some cucumbers. I love me some little baby cucumbers. I think they're so cute. Just kind of getting nice and tall there. They really like to climb. And we've got some more cucumbers on this side here. Lots and lots of cucumbers. There's the greenhouse. I don't have much going on in there right now. I've got some lettuce, um, some spinach, and we have about eight more tomato plants in there, and I've got some green onions that are growing inside. So along these trellises, these are green beans. We have harvested a ton of green beans so far, which has been really fun because I've never actually grown green beans in the garden. And just like the cucumbers, they love to climb, so they're already growing up really tall, as you can tell back there. Now, this trellis, for whatever reason, has been attacked by Japanese beetles, like you would not believe. Um, as you can see, they just destroy the plant. Look at that. It's like a skeleton of a leaf, and they will kill the entire plant. So what we've done um, in the last few days is we just covered this trellis here with some bug netting. And so far, it's keeping the Japanese beetles off, so we'll see if that helps to save these plants. Here's my strawberry bed. These were planted last year. So this is our second year with them. We did harvest some little strawberries at the beginning of spring, or I should say late spring. But as you guys know, strawberries tend to take a good year or two before you can really get much out of them. So hopefully next year we'll get a good harvest. And I've got some chives growing up here in the center. I've got regular watermelon and then seedless watermelon and then just regular cantaloupes growing in here. So they get pretty big too, but I have no issue with them completely growing out as big as they want in this area right here. They can even, they're going to obviously come out of the box and that's fine. Over here, I've got my carrot bed, which I desperately need to get out here and thin out. I've thinned out several of the rows, but I had to replant some of the rows because they didn't germinate. So the ones that have recently sprouted up, I need to come out and thin them out. And I just come out with a pair of scissors and separate them out and thin them out, so they'll be fine. So over here, we did have a whole row of potato plants. And when Joe was in Arizona, I surprised him by doing the mulching in the garden, like I told you. But I hired some gardeners to come and help me. 
and apparently they don't know the difference between potato plants and weeds. Even though we had this little fence up, y'all, they weed whacked them to the ground. <laughs> like, like to the ground. They are just dead as dead can be. So that was a lost cause. And I was really bummed because they were growing really big and doing really well. Here's our sad potato bed. Huh, Joe? Oh. <laughs> they were so big and so green and so beautiful until we got all that rain and they're pretty much all dead. So we'll see what happens, but you know, that's how gardening life goes. You have successes, you have failures, and every year you take lessons learned into the next season and you do better. And then over here, we've got our peppers. We have jalapenos and bell peppers. Um, what else, Joe? No, no, no. Just lots of different pepper plants. We had to cover this bed as well with uh, bug netting because something was just eating all of our jalapenos down to the stems, like all the leaves were gone. So I find that the netting works really well. You know, it's not the prettiest thing. You can tack it up and make it a lot neater, but you know, you know how it is, you guys. Sometimes you're just busy. You just got to get it fixed and get it done. So we just come out, throw the netting over it, and it seems to be keeping the bugs off. So Joe's out here harvesting. We got some zucchini and some more cucumbers lots of cucumbers lots of zucchini we made some zoodles the other night with dinner sauteed them in butter and garlic it was absolutely delicious so we've got regular cucumbers and pickling cucumbers these obviously are pickling cucumbers they're smaller so they're perfect for pickles if you guys haven't checked out my dill pickle video i just did i'll link it so you guys can check it out easiest way ever to make pickles no canning necessary in there. I, like I was telling you guys, I always keep rosemary um, and just like the basic herbs on my deck so that when I'm cooking and something calls for a sprig of this or a sprig of that, I can just quickly come out and snip, snip. So I've got some rosemary and then I've got my thyme over here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video of the garden and how it's doing so far and the hoop house also. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You guys know that I always get back to you. I try to check comments every morning with my coffee um, and spend a little time with my YouTube family. So I hope you guys are gonna be hanging out with us Friday evening for our homestead hangout this Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bring your favorite drink, whatever you'd like to drink, coffee, tea, beer, wine, whatever, and come hang out. I've almost got Joe talked into hanging out with us. Right, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I promise to do it next month. And I'm like, no, you didn't say no. You kind of just lifted your eyebrows. And when you lift your eyebrows, that means that it's like, maybe I'm thinking about it. So. He's going to be there. So you have to be there so that he'll be there. Okay. All right. So we do homestead hangout once a month. It's the first Friday of every month where I just like to sit down and hang out with you guys and chat all things life, all things homesteading, um, and just hang out with our YouTube tribe. So take care, you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. So um, let me show you guys what we go. I cannot, Joe, seriously? <laughs> like for a minute straight, I'm trying not to laugh. Would you stop? Okay. Uh, bring your favorite drink. No. <laughs> Be a favorite drink.